Young Daon finds himself ensnared in a meticulously crafted trap, completely unaware of the danger that awaits him. His colleagues, although Xiong Wu had intended to rescue him, were caught off guard by his unfortunate predicament and were unable to intervene in time. Young Daon's condition worsens as he loses copious amounts of blood, causing his senses to gradually fade. He desperately wishes that this nightmare isn't real as he questions why he was summoned into this merciless world. This cruel reality began a month ago when he was mysteriously transported to a peculiar realm known as the Dungeon. The confusion among those present was palpable, with some speculating that they had fallen under some sort of hypnotic spell. It was then that a white rabbit appeared, introducing itself as the game's manager and extending an invitation to all present. One of the summoned individuals became so enraged that he refused to listen to the rabbit any longer, yearning to return to his previous life. However, due to his impulsive nature, he became the first casualty in this deadly game. The revelation that this was not a mere dream, but an actuality, left everyone in a state of shock. The game had officially commenced, and the dungeon world, while not quite hell, harbored lurking monsters in its dark corners. Survival depended on evading the treacherous traps scattered throughout the dungeon. As time passes, the consequences of even the slightest negligence prove fatal. The need to eliminate one another in order to survive becomes a grim reality, as the ultimate objective is to stay alive. At the onset of the narrative, young Dayon finds himself in a precarious situation during his final mission, as he falls into a trap. Seated in the pit, he attentively listens to the ongoing battle, speculating that there are more than ten survivors, given their apparent success. To his astonishment, young Dion realizes that he is still alive for some inexplicable reason. Meanwhile, the others above continue their relentless pursuit of vanquishing the boss monster. Sung Wu emerges victorious, thanks to young Dion's contributions. In a surprising turn of events, the White Rabbit makes an appearance and commends the entire group for their exceptional performance. The unexpected triumph of a seemingly feeble individual over the formidable final boss leaves everyone in awe. The White Rabbit specifically praises Xiong Wu for his remarkable skills. Xiong Wu, hopeful that he can finally return home, expresses his desire to move on to the next area. However, he soon realizes that this ability must be earned before progressing further. A heated debate ensues, as everyone reminds him of his promise to clear the game by defeating the final boss. Craftily, the White Rabbit reveals that Zone 1 has been completed and that the next one awaits them. Apologizing for any disappointment caused, the White Rabbit bestows upon the group the gift of rejuvenation, allowing them to recover from their injuries and fatigue. With renewed vigor, everyone prepares to venture into the next zone marking the beginning of their dungeon exploration. Coincidentally, as the White Rabbit granted the power of recovery, young Dion, who was ensnared in the trap, also regained consciousness. Upon realizing that she was still alive, the White Rabbit declined to assist her in seeking companions, as the system had already marked her as deceased, rendering all abilities on the display panel dysfunctional and at their peak capacity. Young Dion, unwilling to accept her fate, utilized all her powers to search for an escape route. Through some means, she managed to manifest food using her abilities. Despite not having had a satisfying meal in a month, Young Dion now viewed this place as a sanctuary where she could evade the monster's pursuit. Feeling the urgency to leave, Young Dion was determined to find a way out. Adjacent to her was a formidable, towering rock wall. Suddenly, an idea struck Young Dayon. She decided to meticulously dig in a direction that avoided the rock walls, hoping that this method would lead her to freedom, although the outcome remained uncertain. Young Dayon's determination to try something new was met with a challenge when he encountered the issue of having nowhere to put the excess ground he dug up. However, he came up with a solution by suggesting to store the quarried stones while focusing on excavating the ground. By chance, Young Dion stumbled upon a newfound ability that made him feel invincible, as if he could tear anything apart effortlessly. This skill, in addition to his expertise in manipulating mud, proved to be advantageous in consolidating the excavated soil. Initially, 
Yong Dayon felt envious of Xiong Wu's superior strength skill, but he soon realized that his own skill played a crucial role in his tunneling endeavors. The White Rabbit was astonished by the length of the tunnel that Yong Dayon had dug. He marveled at how Yong Dayon managed to create a bed and even a table within the tunnel, essentially turning it into a makeshift home. The White Rabbit was taken aback by the sight before him, prompting a series of questions about Yong Dayon's intentions with the food he had prepared. After realizing that Yong Dayon had acquired a new skill, the White Rabbit chuckled at the situation, deeming it rather peculiar that even with this new skill, Yong Dayon seemed to be struggling. It became apparent that Yong Dayon needed to prepare himself as the dungeon was undergoing reconstruction, rendering all the tunnels he had dug useless. Yong Dayon had to swiftly return to his starting point. The White Rabbit, feeling optimistic that Yong Dayon would overcome this challenge, advised him to focus on completing the game efficiently, rather than attempting to escape. According to his perspective, Yong Dayon is an incompetent player, and such players will be regenerated. He was infuriated by a set of regulations that only authorized the elimination of players who failed to adhere to the rules. It is not within the jurisdiction of the White Rabbit to simply eliminate players. Yong Daon was well aware of this predicament, so he no longer paid any attention to the White Rabbit. He turned around to resume his work, but encountered a problem just as he had reconstructed the foundations. The cave's foundations were weakening, causing groundwater to rapidly seep into the aqueduct. The ground continued to rise, posing a potential threat of engulfing Yong Dayon. Just in the nick of time, he managed to swim to safety in the sea. He found a solution, as he did not wish to meet his demise in such a manner, especially considering the amount of progress he had made in clearing land in his inventory. Once again, the White Rabbit was astonished by its own capabilities. It manipulated its skills to utilize layers of earth, resembling a mountain, to fill the cracks in the ground. However, the power exerted was too immense, unable to withstand the pressure of the water. The higher the level of the earth, the more it crumbled under the force. Yong Daon attempted to transform the earth into bricks and eventually succeeded in constructing a wall to prevent water from entering. The flow of groundwater into the tunnel ceased. Yong Daon believed that he had narrowly escaped death this time, and in such circumstances, some individuals would give up and surrender to their fate. The White Rabbit reprimanded Yong Daon for living like a parasite. However, he did not share the same sentiment, as he had been spiritually dead ever since he entered this game. Yong Daon expressed gratitude to the White Rabbit for resolving the issue of drinking water. Thanks to that, Jing Daon once again employed his skills to create a lake with a pipe system, ensuring that groundwater would no longer be a stagnant pond. Now, he desired to present something intriguing to the White Rabbit. Yong Dayan skillfully constructs multiple decorative statues, utilizing his abilities to their fullest potential. However, the White Rabbit believes that Yong Dayan could better utilize his skills by preventing groundwater from seeping through. Despite the White Rabbit's skepticism, Yong Dayan dismisses subtlety as useless and proceeds to create a pond and a fountain as the White Rabbit suggested. The system notifies Yong Dayon that the reward for his efforts will be a pond teeming with live fish. True to its word, a school of fish appears in the pond. The white rabbit is taken aback by this unexpected turn of events and falls to the ground in astonishment. Yong Dayon is overjoyed as he no longer has to worry about starving to death. With clean water and an abundance of fish, his survival is assured. He expresses his gratitude to God for this newfound security. However, the White Rabbit, always the skeptic, warns Yong Dayon not to get his hopes up too high. Undeterred, Yong Dayon decides to grill some of the fish over a fire. He playfully taunts the White Rabbit by savoring the aroma of the cooking fish, knowing it will make the rabbit's mouth water. The White Rabbit begins to question whether they are still in a dungeon, as they observe other players casually enjoying cooked meat. Sensing the White Rabbit's hunger, Yong Dayon asks if he would like some grilled fish concerned that the rabbit may not eat enough if it is only cooked. The white rabbit wonders why Yong Dayon chooses to cook the fish instead of eating it raw, but his curiosity does not dampen Yong Dayon's spirits. In fact, 
he appreciates the White Rabbit's company and thanks him for alleviating his loneliness. Grateful for the White Rabbit's assistance and ideas, Young Dayon rewards him with a large piece of grilled meat. Despite the White Rabbit's protests, his mouth begins to water uncontrollably, unable to resist the temptation. Young Dayon intentionally avoided looking, feigning forgetfulness about rabbits being herbivores, and instead shouted angrily that he could eat them because he was a special rabbit capable of consuming meat. After satisfying his hunger, Young Dayon went to sleep. The white rabbit observed him dozing off and remarked that he was the first person in the history of the dungeon who probably still lacked knowledge about the world. The monsters in the dungeon were always ravenous, and one should not have high expectations in this unforgiving place, just as the white rabbit had warned. A large wild boar, lured by the scent of barbecue, approached Yung Dayan while he slept. Fortunately, he woke up just in time, recalling Sung Wu's advice that this particular monster only enhanced his intelligence. Yung Dayan attempted to fend off the boar with the mud he had fashioned. He was fortunate to successfully block the boar's advance considering it was the most formidable predator in the initial stage, with a robust and powerful physique that could easily lead to death with the slightest mistake. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Yung Dayon understood that he needed to assert his dominance in a different manner. After making necessary preparations, he summoned a pig to demonstrate his strength, effortlessly breaking through the wall with a single strike. Young Dayon recognized the need to act swiftly, as the groundwater threatened to surge once more if the situation persisted. He yelled, insisting that he hadn't lost. Jing Dao had devised a clever strategy by creating a massive earthen ball to eliminate monsters. Any creature would have perished under the weight of this attack. However, it turned out to be a futile attempt as Young Dayon was unable to lift the colossal ball. Now, it was the boar's turn to strike. Realizing that he couldn't simply discard the ball, Yung Dayon knew he had to find a way to survive. If he managed to capture the wild boar, he would have a source of food. The thought of its greasy taste fueled his motivation. With determination, he crushed the ground into compact pellets and eventually defeated the boar. The white rabbit was still in disbelief. Stage 1 was supposed to be a moderate-level survival skill, but Yung Dayan's mud skill had surpassed all expectations. It was clear that certain conditions allowed for the acquisition of additional skills. The primary purpose of these skills was to survive in the harsh environment, and it was crucial to refine them through battles and experiences. Yung Dayan's rapid improvement in his mud skill was unprecedented, leaving the white rabbit astonished. Young Down hurriedly rushed to retrieve the defeated wild boar. The infuriated white rabbit directed a curse towards Young Dayon. However, he paid no attention to it and proceeded to slaughter the wild boar. After two hours, the room's temperature would change due to environmental factors. If the meat gets contaminated, its flavor will be compromised. Young Dayon descended to inform the white rabbit. The enraged white rabbit believed it was none of Young Dayon's concern and advised him not to mutter before being left alone in this monotonous place with no one to converse with. The white rabbit was attempting to fashion a rope to capture a wild boar. While roasting a wild boar, he taunted Yung Dayon, stating that it would attract monsters. Once the wild boars arrived, they would fall into the trap and perish. Yung Dayon didn't need to fight for food. This method proved to be highly effective, as numerous wild boars were drawn to the scent. As darkness fell, they decided it was time to return to the cave. One of them glanced regretfully at the pile of dead wild boars, realizing what a waste it was. While the meat of this particular species was poisonous, they couldn't afford to go hungry. Despite the lack of clean food, there were plenty of deceased monsters around, so they made the decision to stockpile some for future consumption. For the time being, the rabbit mentioned that if Yung Dayon were present, he could utilize his purification abilities to cleanse the food. Sung Wu murmured that people perceived him solely as someone who prepared and tidied up food. The objective of the game is survival, not combat. Those who engage in combat must always eliminate the target and claim the reward. But without food, 
individuals will not have the strength to retaliate. Sung Wu reiterated that Young Daeon had assisted them. Conversely, Young Daeon also acquired the same power as Seung Wu because they had jointly ensnared the wild boar. Young Daeon was becoming frustrated by the numerous pork bones he had to amass, prompting him to consider expanding the area. The white rabbit had been seated in a corner ever since discovering the strength skill he had acquired, perplexed by the sudden acquisition. Seeking confirmation, the white rabbit inquired about it. He explained that his strength stemmed from successfully capturing a wild boar. Jing Daon was also highly doubtful, having personally slain 100 boars. The only explanation for those 100 boars falling into the trap is one. The white rabbit realized that the population of boars in the area had undergone multiple regenerations and fixes, resulting in a total of around 40 animals. This meant that no matter how many boars Jung Daeon killed, the number would keep accumulating. Jing Daeon believed that each animal he caught would contribute to his progress, and he aimed to catch 100 monsters to achieve a milestone. However, capturing that many creatures without the use of traps seemed challenging. The White Rabbit expressed frustration towards Young Daeon for consuming pork regularly, warning that he might eventually transform into a pig if he continued this habit. A squirrel outside followed the scent of the wall and entered the dungeon, attracted by the aroma of the pork bones left by Young Daeon. Inside the basement, the squirrel's flaming eyes perceived the vastness of the place as it followed the falling bones, which eventually landed in a bowl on Young Daeon's stomach. Young Daeon woke up to find a cheerful little squirrel. After spending months alone in the cave, he finally encountered others. He gently caressed the baby squirrel's head, afraid of scaring it away. However, the little squirrel looked at Young Daeon with affectionate eyes. By chance, Young Daeon unlocked more skills and became a good friend to the squirrel. The system confirmed that he had successfully tamed the timid little squirrel within the forest of the dungeon. Young Daeon cherished this newfound bond. He had never experienced such remarkable achievements when he was with his comrades. Prior to his best friend's arrival, he was unaware of his own accomplishments. Nevertheless, what mattered most was that he finally had a friend. Young Daeon named the squirrel Pokio. He discovered that the ground squirrels understood his words. Young Daeon placed his right hand on Pokio and instructed it to sit down. The squirrel obediently followed his command, even though it didn't comprehend the meaning behind the words. Then, Pokio gestured for Jung Dayan to follow. Uncertain of what lay ahead, Jung Dayan decided to trust the squirrel and followed its lead. Discovered that the origin of the small squirrel was the tree path for climbing. He clung to a glimmer of hope that he could reach up there. The surprising truth was that Jung Dayan managed to escape from the tunnel thanks to this method. Above the dungeon lay the green meadow, something he hadn't seen in a while. However, Young Daon was soon ambushed by the wolves. Determined not to let them escape, he hurriedly retreated back into the wolf dungeon. The wolves relentlessly pursued Young Daon Young while he carelessly endured their attacks. He knew that if he wasn't cautious, he would meet his demise. Desperately, he attempted to strike at one side of their faces. Then, Young Daon remembered his special ability and utilized it to counter the wolves. He succeeded, experiencing this extraordinary power for the first time. His physical condition, worn out from digging tunnels all day, proved to be advantageous during the battle. The wolf must have suffered some damage from his previous blow, but he swiftly finished it off. The main drawback of this skill was its limited duration, with only six seconds remaining. With the time running out, Young Daeon couldn't afford to wait any longer. He swiftly retrieved a sword from his inventory, and as the wolf retaliated, he realized that his previous swift paw attack was perilous. If he continued to attack in the same manner, he had no chance of winning. When the wolf opened its mouth, he knew this was his final opportunity to strike. Rabbit went to find Young Daeon that afternoon, noticing the absence of meat grilling. He speculated that Jung Dayon might have overindulged in pork and transformed into a pig. Encountering Jung Dayon in armor, he explained the need for a day of preparation due to the increasing dangers. Rabbit discovered a wolf's head in Jung Dayon's possession, suggesting a possible breakthrough. Since then, 
Jung Dayan diligently honed his boar fighting skills, striving for greater strength. Venturing out to test his abilities, he faced two wolves, aiming to defeat them with his newfound power. Despite his efforts, Rabbit remained skeptical of his progress. Jung Dayan sensed a surge of strength within him, while Rabbit goaded him to prove his prowess by challenging the wolves. Now his efficiency has increased by 2.4 times, allowing him to move 2.4 times faster. After that, Jung Dayan swiftly descended. Leave behind the White Rabbit, who harbors animosity towards Jung Dayan. The White Rabbit observed Jung Dayan's silhouette vanish into the dungeon. Jung Dayan should have engaged in combat, otherwise he would have been obliterated. Now that he had entered the tunnels, Jung Dayan breathed a sigh of relief, knowing they were safe. The location wasn't as dreadful as he had anticipated, as he had constructed seven tunnels as a precaution. Peering out from the tunnel, they spotted the wolves closing in on them. White Rabbit pondered what Jung Dayan's next move would be. Utilizing the mud pellets he had prepared, combined with the strength of a boar, Jung Dayan aimed to repel the wolves by hurling 20 kilograms of mud at them from a distance. Although Jung Dayan managed to defeat one wolf, he was not as fortunate with the next one. As he attempted to flee, he was ambushed by another wolf. White Rabbit stood outside, urging the wolf to attack and tear Jung Dayan apart. However, when the wolf approached Jung Dayan, he swiftly dodged the attack, spitting out blood as he blocked the strike. The horned pig stands as the supreme being in terms of physical strength in the initial phase, boasting an unparalleled defense that surpasses all other monsters. It comes as no surprise that it can effortlessly fend off an attack from a mere wolf. The toolbar indicates a mere six seconds remaining, but with the might of the drill, he momentarily forgets about the time limit. Nonetheless, eight seconds proved to be sufficient to bring down his opponent. The strategy employed is rather straightforward. Jing utilizes underground tunnels, employing perilous guerrilla tactics such as talking bushes to eliminate monsters and safely navigate past wolves. However, the wolves begin to grow more vigilant and start to trail the herd. Jung Dayon, acting as a scout, uses poke and continues to practice while the wolf patiently waits above. Eventually, he becomes so formidable that the wolf can no longer reach him. Similar to before, White Rabbit finds it difficult to believe the unfairness of what he witnesses. If he truly desired to, he could easily handle two or three children simultaneously. Jung Dayon's initial step proves successful, and now it is time for him to progress to the next stage. White Rabbit had once mentioned that defeating the boss was the key to finishing the game. However, he acknowledged that he was not yet strong enough to accomplish this task alone. Therefore, he needed to seek out other players to collaborate with. Despite being lost and unsure of his next move, White Rabbit was stopped by the rabbit from finding everyone. Jing Dayon, feeling uncertain about finding another way, was startled by a tap on his shoulder. He inquired about the whereabouts of the other players, but the response was incomprehensible to him. Perhaps the forest was still unfamiliar to him, making communication difficult. Realizing the danger of delving too deeply into the unknown, Jing Dayon decided to construct an observatory instead of confronting the boss directly. By laying a foundation and building an earthen wall, he drew upon his experience to create a sturdy structure. With a design secret from his time in the cave, Jing Dayon completed the Tower of the White Rabbit after ten hours of hard work. From a distance, he observed a group of new people gathering near the tower. He was unaware of the nature of this unfamiliar object, as he had never encountered it before. Only one individual possessed the ability to create such things. White Rabbit swiftly sought out Jung Dayon, urgently warning him to cease constructing these troublesome devices. However, Jung Dayon seemed unstoppable. White Rabbit could only devise a plan to prevent anyone from approaching the final stage. He desired to eliminate Jing and all others, but a horde of formidable creatures materialized simultaneously. If this were to occur again, he would surely perish. Fortunately, the monsters lacked intelligence. White Rabbit considered himself fortunate that Jung Dayon was in close proximity to the observatory. This rat-like creature had emerged approximately four weeks ago, coinciding with the creation of this dungeon.
The monsters were terrifying, devouring anything and everything in their path. Despite Yung Dayan's daily visits to inspect his calendar, he failed to realize that today marked the fourth week, signaling the need to recreate the replica. Consequently, individuals no longer appeared on the mini-map. They either perished or defeated the boss, progressing to the next stage. The mini-map served as a comprehensive overview, encompassing both humans and monsters, which Yung Dayan had obtained while conquering the tower. Time was of the essence leaving no room for further delay. They had to meticulously and cautiously locate everyone. For some inexplicable reason, fear plagued him incessantly. Perched on Yung Dayan's shoulder, he shouted, attempting to reassure him that they possessed an abundance of maps and could successfully evade the encampment. Despite enduring numerous hardships to reach this point, they were confronted by a colossal monster. Everyone is perplexed on how to overcome him. They believed that they couldn't even make a dent until one of them, armed with a gun, rushed forward and met an instant demise at the hands of the boss. This incident only heightened the fear among everyone present as the boss prepared to attack them all. Just then, Yung Dayun came to the rescue, recalling Sung Wu's teachings on how to slay monsters, and began his assault. Sung Wu had once advised him to remember that everything has a weak point and that the larger they are, the more difficult it is to bring them down. The boss in front of him remained motionless, and Yung Dion realized that there might be a problem. Perhaps the boss was attempting to regenerate its body parts, but he wouldn't allow it. Seizing this opportunity, Yung Dion made a grave mistake and struck the wrong spot, wasting precious time. The boss took advantage of this and finished him off. Those watching from outside had no clue what kind of monster could challenge a boss like this. A girl spoke up, stating that they couldn't just stand idly by and watch. She rushed to aid Yung Dayon, knowing that time was limited and he couldn't attack with full force. Yung Dayon requested her help in buying time, assuring her that he would be fine, and warned her to be cautious. With that, Yung Dayon launched an attack, targeting the center of the boss's chest. Unbeknownst to him, the boss always protected its chest during the end of its attacks. Yung Dayan speculated that there must be something significant there. As everyone continued to inflict damage on the boss's chest, he realized that it was made of earth. If that was the case, he could handle it. Jing Dan had gathered sufficient information and now required to strike precisely and forcefully at the boss, who seemed impervious to all physical attacks. This is why he decided to spend more time observing the boss to identify its weakness. Eventually, Yung Daon managed to defeat the boss effortlessly. Following the defeat of the boss, the group headed towards the White Rabbit. Sung Wu and the others complied, and Yung Daon felt content as he was now part of the group. The White Rabbit, however, was furious at Yung Daon for destroying the boss and began shouting, claiming that the game was not yet over. It urged everyone to proceed to the next stage and opened the gate for them. A girl advised the group to leave, and despite having no other option, they expressed their gratitude towards Yung Dayan for aiding their escape before departing one by one. Poke also followed Yung Dayan, but the outcome was not as expected as the system continued to display errors. The White Rabbit mentioned that the dungeon system was rejecting him, and a week later, the dungeon was rebuilt. Yung Dayan pondered on his situation, realizing that he could not continue living like this. The ground squirrels remained by his side and the hole had not been recreated. The observatory had vanished, indicating that only the surface had been reset, while the depths remained unchanged. Yung Dayan speculated that the creator of the dungeon system was not the creator of the world, but rather someone who had integrated their own system into the existing world. This meant that he could potentially access other areas without adhering to the game's requirements. Ultimately, Yung Dayan decided to escape to Death Mountain, facing numerous challenges and the final monster. Despite his efforts, Yung Dayan found himself unable to leave. The system issued a warning, stating that the player must not exit Stage 1. The White Rabbit tried to dissuade Yung Dayan from his plans, but he remained determined. He traversed the outskirts of the rat monster territory as the white rabbit conversed. Young Dayan descended through an imperceptible barrier to the opposite side, 
pondering if there was a distinction. The white rabbit called out to him to return. Now, Yung Daon hesitated to go back, challenging the white rabbit to physically retrieve him if necessary. He discovered that the white rabbit was unable to cross into that area. This was a realm beyond their control. He speculated that it likely divided the world into different phases. Departing the area, he contemplated exploring further to ascertain if it required resetting like the other side. What about the rats? With approximately two weeks until the next reset, he planned to establish observatories. In accordance with the previous dungeon system, anything constructed above ground would vanish two weeks after the reset commenced. However, if this area did not reset, he would no longer face challenges with the terrain or creatures, potentially finding a solution to escape. Yung Daon inspected his inventory and obtained a golem core capable of creating anything. Before constructing it, he dug a tunnel to avoid drawing unwanted attention. He decided against creating a humanoid golem, opting for something more practical for navigating the cave. After numerous unsuccessful attempts, Jing finally managed to create a six-legged elephant on his first try. The creature obediently followed his commands. White Rabbit guided a team of new members in battling the final boss, and they all successfully reached the designated location. Despite their efforts to defeat the boss in the first phase, White Rabbit led them to an area where there was no boss to confront. The room was left in disarray with a pile of mud. The White Rabbit became frantic upon witnessing the chaos, realizing that the boss had disappeared. He suspected that only one person, the troublesome bug, could be responsible for this. The bug seemed to have a direct connection to the treacherous mountain of death. Yung Daun Dao spent a week crafting an elephant golem, a wise decision considering the dangers of the mountain of death. Now that he had a golem to ride, Yung Daeon pondered on what creation to make next. Perhaps another golem specializing in attack, capable of walking on two legs and having two arms to carry heavy objects. Eventually, Yung Daeon successfully brought to life the monkey golem. Eager to test its strength, he engaged in battle against a swarm of rat monsters. The monkey golem possessed the same level of power as the stage one boss, but instead of diminishing the rat horde, they seemed to multiply in great numbers. Realizing the need for a large-scale attack, Young Daeon fashioned a massive clay ball and instructed the monkey golem to hurl it anywhere. As the giant ball rolled over the lifeless rats, Young Daeon devised a clever method of utilizing elephants as storage for ammunition. This way, the monkey golem could retrieve the ammunition whenever it was needed. Suddenly, the rats launched an attack and scurried away in panic, even jabbing Yung Daeon in the shoulder. He became fearful that the dungeon had regenerated. The unexpected danger prompted him to open the mini-map and he noticed that the map was gradually growing darker around phase one of the observatory. Fortunately, Yung Daeon vanished, but the observatory near the Death Mountain remained intact indicating that the surrounding area had not been reset. However, the number of dots representing monsters began to steadily increase. The creatures gathered together and attacked the walls. Yung Daeon swiftly commanded the elephants and monkeys to prepare for battle. He planned to deploy the elephants on the ground while the monkeys took to the skies. As he prepared, he felt a slight tremor. He knew he had to deal with all the monsters in the other areas before they could gather here after the reset was complete. This was an opportunity he couldn't afford to miss. Now was the perfect time to level up and create a lot of chaos. He ordered the monkeys to throw everything they had at the rats. He even created a massive chunk of earth to the right, intending to hurl it down like a meteorite. However, the number of rats was simply overwhelming. Yung Daeon's endurance was waning, and his only skill, Boar's skill, required cooldown. Luckily, he was in the safety of the observatory, allowing him to regain his composure. He knew he only had one chance at life. The rats began to pile up again, attempting to reach the tower. Yung Daeon sent Poku to clear them out, combining his power from above. As he did, he pondered on what he needed to do next. He realized he had to construct a tunnel while rebuilding but a boulder obstructed his path. Yung Daeon was taken by surprise when he stumbled upon a rock in an unexpected location. He struggled to handle it properly,
but decided to return to the ground at the top of the mountain. The weather was cold and snowy, making walking increasingly challenging. Fortunately, the harsh weather kept the rats away. Despite the setback of not being able to continue digging underground, Yung Dayan realized he could still work on constructing the observatory. He understood that continuing to dig and encountering more rocks would not be feasible. In order to overcome this obstacle, Yung Dayan needed to create additional golems. His mastery of earth skills had greatly improved, allowing him to easily handle the wolves that had previously posed a threat. However, he remained cautious, as there was a possibility of encountering a powerful monster. Yung Dayan proceeded to create more golems and led his troops to the surface. The mountain was unusually cold that day, causing Yung Dayan to repeatedly sneeze. He decided to halt the journey and constructed a dome engine on the back of an elephant to provide warmth. At this point, Yung Dayan realized that his skills could be utilized for more than just simple tasks. He was tapping into the knowledge he was born with. In the dungeon created by the elephant golems, Yung Dayon had successfully built a heating system and a mobile home. This invention granted him the ability to manipulate heat. They continued their journey through the challenging mountain terrain, making it difficult for Yung Dayon to assess the surroundings. However, when he looked back, he realized how far he had come. Yung Dayon felt fortunate that the road had been relatively smooth and not too treacherous. As he descended from the elephant, and surveyed the surroundings from the towering mountain. A sense of comfort enveloped his heart. While scanning the area, he noticed something peculiar in the distance. Intrigued, he made the decision to approach and investigate further. Unfamiliar with this location, he pondered why it existed and why the White Rabbit had never mentioned this structure to him. Although it resembled the ancient relics he often encountered, even the rabbit was unaware of its significance as a pre-existing site predating the appearance of dungeons. Young Down found himself at a loss, unsure of what to do or if his assumptions were correct. Nevertheless, he ventured inside and was immediately captivated by a peculiar statue. Despite its unusual appearance, seemingly crafted from an unfamiliar stone, Young Dayan couldn't resist the urge to examine it more closely. Suddenly, he was ambushed caught off guard by the unexpected attack. In a desperate bid for survival, he summoned a monkey to aid him. However, both monkeys were swiftly repelled by the stone statue's power. Jing Down found himself with no choice but to flee, desperately seeking an escape route. Jung Down ran close to the mountain of death and paused to take a break. The attacks from the enemies had no impact on the stone statue. He considered himself fortunate to have lost only one golem. Since he couldn't locate it on the map and it was outside the designated territory, it couldn't possibly be the final boss's chamber. Yung Daon speculated that the ruins might be the reason why rats avoided the area. He was convinced that there was a hidden secret waiting to be discovered. A month later, he stumbled upon the peak of Death Mountain, which was littered with boulders. There, he encountered a moonlight sculptor. After suffering defeat at the hands of a mysterious creature, Yung Daon meticulously planned his revenge. To understand the events that transpired, we must rewind to a month earlier when someone carelessly dropped him into this predicament. His initial intention was to create more golems, but he stumbled upon an unexpected item. The harsh reality he learned from past experiences was that Earth was no match for rock. He needed a weapon capable of countering the stone statue's power. By increasing the number of golems and mastering stone-crushing skills, King Yung Daon learned to combine these abilities with earth-based skills. The newly acquired stone, although made from the same material, proved to be more challenging to manipulate. He had to crush more rocks and regenerate them with the destroyed earth. Engaging in a one-on-one -on -one battle with the golem would result in defeat, especially since the monsters could fly. Finding a suitable environment for combat was difficult in an open field. If he engaged in a direct confrontation, there might be a slim chance of victory. However, if the battle escalated into the sky, the outcome was uncertain. He struggled to come up with a solution, realizing that creating a tunnel with his current rock-breaking abilities would take far too long. Then, a sudden idea struck him. 
He had initially designed the golem to resemble an elephant, but now he needed it to be more agile like a monkey in order to effectively combat enemies. With this new insight, he modified the golem to possess the necessary mobility. He discussed his plans with Yong Dayon, and together they developed a new design for a highly mobile golem, the Ford Torian Golem, along with a new steed golem. Transforming his elephant golem into an ostrich, he successfully assembled a cavalry team. Taking charge of the formations and guiding the golems in battle, he found himself in control of the situation. Through this intense battle, his rock-breaking skills improved significantly, reaching level 4. Meanwhile, a baboon monkey approached the white rabbit, inquiring about its well-being. This baboon, the dungeon manager of level 2 stage 1, was one level higher than the white rabbit. Unlike the mysterious baboon, this baboon had a known name and was the owner of the second dungeon. White Rabbit reprimanded the arrival of the unattractive individual, yet still cordially inquired about the reason for their visit to such a mundane location. Baboon inquired about White Rabbit's performance, leaving the confused rabbit unsure of what was being referenced. White Rabbit quietly wiped away sweat, expressing that he always gave his best effort. The baboon criticized White Rabbit's work ethic, insinuating that he was lazy. White Rabbit, feeling misunderstood, attributed any mistakes to Jung Dayon. Despite the baboon's skepticism, White Rabbit maintained his honesty and integrity, challenging the baboon to find another rabbit as truthful as him. The baboon's revelation left White Rabbit speechless. Upon vanquishing the monsters collected by Jung Dayon, a return was made to him. Within the shrine, filled with the bones of various creatures, an abundance of decaying corpses lay. Jung Dayon must exercise caution. The golem leading the way inadvertently triggered a hidden arrow trap above. Despite the unexpected trap, the golem remained unscathed. Commanding the golems to demolish a wall, Jung Dayon anticipated the flying arrows that followed. Taking a brief respite, he seized the opportunity to release arrows at the golems, embedding them in their bodies. The moss-covered surroundings hinted at the long abandonment of the place. While Jung Dayon surveyed the area, Poku suddenly shrieked and darted into a hole in the wall. Ordering the golem to breach the wall, a massive door materialized, likely leading to the final boss's chamber. Sensing the demise of the last boss, Jung Dayon opened the door to reveal a colossal skeleton. His attempt to retreat was thwarted, realizing the true danger lay not in the door, but in the bones sought for consumption. The system declared that having overcome all challenges, he would inherit the dragon tomb as the mausoleum's new owner. Young Dayon is determined to survive in this desolate location. The system insists that this is all the more reason for him to inherit the dragon mausoleum. Once he becomes the owner, he will gain the power of the dragon, which will help him achieve his ultimate goal. With this power, there will be no place he cannot reach, even in other dimensions. However, in order to create a portal, a sacrifice is required, and the tomb system has designated him as the chosen entity for this role. Meanwhile, the White Rabbit is intercepted by the Baboon, who has taken on the task of locating him as he was originally meant to be sacrificed. Following the trail left behind, the White Rabbit tracks down Young Dayon. Attempting to utilize his abilities to open a gate, the system informs him that he is currently unable to travel anywhere. Feeling the necessity to establish at least two portals to facilitate teleportation between them. Jung Daon was pleased with the possibility of summoning golems anywhere, making it easier for him to escape danger by using the gates. It seemed like a good idea to utilize them regardless. The system, known as Alpha, reminded him that he needed to allow it to pass through. Jung Daon then requested Alpha to step outside for a moment to get some fresh air. Outside, there was a land covered in clouds. Jung Dion pondered whether Alpha was aware of its own identity. However, Alpha seemed unaware, as her focus was solely on being in the tomb. Feeling a bit anxious, Jung Dion noticed that the area looked like the end of the world, resembling a flat surface. He decided to use his stone-crushing skill to construct a ladder leading down from the tomb. The system observed him with a series of surprises. The White Rabbit embarks on a journey to locate Jung Dayon, feeling exhausted and famished. 
Its health and satiety levels are rapidly declining, yet there is still a considerable distance to cover in order to find him. The white rabbit wonders why it must endure such cold, hunger, and fatigue, and how long it has been since its salary was reduced. Initially, it possessed the ability to eliminate one opponent, known as the river energy, which would then be transferred to the manager. However, its current state is a result of Jing Dao's mistake, as the white rabbit narrowly escaped being devoured by a rat. Filled with fear and growing weaker by the moment, the white rabbit's strength continues to diminish, making it vulnerable to becoming prey for the rats. As its stats plummet once again, the white rabbit loses its ability to fly. Realizing that the situation is dire, a horde of rats charge toward the rabbit, prompting it to seek refuge in the tower constructed by Yong Dayon. He exerted his final ounce of strength to fight, despite the seemingly feeble appearance of the white rabbit. The white rabbit, who was the manager of the first stage, had devised a cunning plan to lure the rats to the top of the observatory and defeat them one by one as they emerged from the narrow passage. Thanks to his superior tactics, the white rabbit had the upper hand and successfully vanquished the rats. However, although the rabbit had lost the ability to organize, all of his stats quickly plummeted to one, rendering him unable to continue the battle. Just as he was about to fall, Yung Dayon came to his rescue. Upon awakening, the white rabbit discovered a pile of food in front of him. However, he could only partake in the feast under the condition that he bet against Yung Dayon. To his astonishment, the white rabbit learned that Yung Dayon was the successor to the dragon tomb. Being an experienced individual, the white rabbit chose to align himself with Yung Dayon. As he sat with a bag of potatoes on his lap, Savoring his meal, the white rabbit curiously inquired about the reason for their presence in this forbidden place, questioning the manager's disregard for the rules and various other peculiarities. Frowning, the white rabbit recounted the events that had transpired. He mentioned the change in management at the first stage and made a passing remark about a baboon. However, the primary concern for Yung Dayon was whether the white rabbit had come to apprehend him. Upon hearing this, the white rabbit swiftly responded, assuring Jung Dayon that he had made a decision to join forces with him. This presents an opportunity for both of you to collaborate on understanding that Alpha wishes to join the conversation. Upon hearing the mention of Alpha, he was taken aback, realizing that the dragon symbol represented Earth Day's tomb. Alpha instructed them to head to the altar first, causing the rabbit to panic and inquire if it was to be sacrificed. Dismissing the rabbit as foolish, Alpha advised it not to interfere. Yung Dayon had previously explained to the white rabbit that he too was surprised, and would be even more so upon entering the room where the dragon skeleton lay. Following the white rabbit's meal, it was promoted to middle manager, a decision that the system deemed appropriate given the white rabbit's experience, which surpassed its previous role. The white rabbit pledged loyalty to its master. Meanwhile, the baboon wondered why it had suddenly lost contact with the white rabbit. The white rabbit's fondness for Yung Dao's potatoes led it to continuously request them, devouring them eagerly as Yung Dao continued to refer to them as such. Yung Dao's statement emphasized the importance of work for survival, while also mentioning the significance of a warm room, referred to as a fireplace, for farming and cooking. The white rabbit, curious about its fate, inquired if it would be discarded once it fulfilled its purpose. Upon hearing this, Yung Daon appeared angered. With a mischievous expression, Yung Daeon reminded them to develop a habit of saving money, but cautioned that doing so would harm the golem. This scene sparked a thoughtful idea in his mind. He instructed the white rabbit to gather bones and crush them to use as fertilizer for the plants, as it would be highly effective. Living with Yung Dayon proved to be challenging for the rabbit, but it also brought moments of enjoyment. For instance, Yung Dayon invited the rabbit to indulge in delicious food that it had never tasted before, including the meat of a one-horned wild boar found in the first stage ruins. This surprised the baboon, as it had assumed the final boss would be unbeatable. The current site before them consisted of a pile of golem core mud recently obtained by the white rabbit and Yung Dayon from the final boss. The white rabbit felt content after consuming the baboons, 
having completed its task. It then created a gate for its owner, and both of them passed through it to the system mausoleum, reminding them of the wastage of life energy. Meanwhile, young Dayan ventured into the forest to collect nectar and stumbled upon a group of adults bullying a young boy. Jung Daon pondered, much like Sung Wu, while he was lost in his thoughts. Suddenly a boy fell onto his lap. This boy had previously been bullied and was now desperately crying out for help. Without hesitation, Jung Daon swiftly defeated the monsters that surrounded the boy. However, after the battle, he found himself running low on energy. Fortunately, the boy pulled out a plethora of cookies and carbonated drinks from his bag. Jung Daon was taken aback and could hardly believe his eyes. In a life as challenging as his, finding solace in something as simple as sweets was a rare treat. However, there was a tinge of regret as he had always relied on material possessions. Recently, Jung Daon had developed an interest in seeking out meaningful experiences instead. This was why he had followed the white rabbit into the forest in search of something more fulfilling after rescuing the boy. Despite Jung Daon's warnings of the potential dangers, the boy continued to follow him, unwavering in his determination. Jung Daon was aware that the child went to the store when summoned, resulting in him having a large amount of candy. Odonman witnessed Jung Daon swiftly constructing a house, which amazed the child. In an instant, the building was completed, showcasing a skill that was different from the skill of collecting skills. However, until now, O Donman still remains unaware of what the child's skill actually is. Jing Down assisted in finding information about the curse skill that the child possessed. It was called God Eats, where consuming food would enhance his strength. When his stomach was full, his physical capacity would double, similar to the skill of a wild boar's vigor. However, the child claimed to have never reached 100% satiety, and therefore had never fully utilized the skill as he was always hungry. Jing Down felt sorrow for the boy and decided to help him become an outstanding teenager within the next three days. Jung Daon prepared a table for the boy, serving him the food he desired. The current state of the white rabbit was quite pitiful, so Jung Daon took him to search for rock salt. Despite being disguised, the white rabbit remained insecure and feared encountering a baboon, which could potentially lead to his demise. At present, they had no idea where to find rock salt. Using his abilities, Jung Daon communicated with the white rabbit and instructed him to return if he couldn't locate the rock salt. Since it was already dark, he also prepared pork belly, the white rabbit's favorite dish, hoping that it would taste even better with the addition of rock salt. In a short amount of time, they managed to acquire something even more formidable. Initially, he aided the young boy in his training by capturing monsters for him to battle, despite both of them being injured. Eventually, they achieved their goal. Donman was aware that Jung Dayan was searching for salt, and the boy showed him the location, a place he used to pass through in the middle of the desert. After spending a long time in the scorching desert, everyone was exhausted. Jung Dayan's face turned crimson as he realized it was more challenging than he had anticipated. Perhaps he had misunderstood something. He wondered why he had left in the first place, and why he couldn't escape this sandy place. The boy's feet sank deep into the sand as well. Jung Dayan erected the gate and summoned the golem soldiers to appear. The young boy was taken aback by the sight of these animal-like tanks and found it incredibly impressive. Jung Dayan informed him that this would be their final training session and imparted all the necessary knowledge to him for which the boy expressed gratitude. Jung Dayan praised him as a bright and intelligent child who would undoubtedly excel. It would have been nice to continue their journey together, but now everyone could pursue their own paths. Golem had grown weary of constantly blaming Jung Dayan for forgetting about him. Despite mocking the other participants, Golem was delighted to see the White Rabbit's current state. Placing the White Rabbit on top of the Golem to rest, the white rabbit gazed around and finally spotted the sea of salt it had been searching for. Everyone began harvesting salt, bringing joy to all. Jung Dayan would now have salt to prepare a delicious meal, bidding farewell to Donman. Suddenly the mausoleum system communicated with someone, instructing them to maintain the system. 
Donman, upon realizing his abilities, was chosen as the support dragon. With this new role, Donman could continue to eat even when full, thereby increasing his strength. As conversations ensued, scorpion beasts appeared and surrounded them, causing Donman to panic. Unsure of what to do, Donman repeatedly called out for Young Daon. However, this time Young Daon refrained from intervening to test Donman's abilities. Despite the kid's initial disbelief, Young Daon encouraged Donman to face the monsters alone as a test. Young Daon warned about the scorpion's poison, but assured that he could purify it if needed. The white rabbit also reassured Donman, emphasizing that the creatures were not very strong and that even if they were wounded, they would not die. The purpose of your practice is to embody the story of Yung Dayon. His journey towards strength through rigorous training was driven by his desire to return to his former world. Despite his concerns for the boy, Yung Dayon proceeded to cook a meal, as the Donman's fighting skills exceeded his expectations, and even the scorpion's meat was surprisingly delicious. The competition to savor the food intensified as he aimed to swiftly finish his meal and join the other two companions. Ultimately, the Donman's task was to eliminate all the monsters. Upon passing the forest exam, O'Donman was granted permission to join the nearby group of adventurers. Yung Daon bid farewell to the boy by gifting him a scarf. As the child departed, a sense of longing lingered. He would soon realize that there is no place like home. The white rabbit questioned Yung Daon about his feelings towards this new place he called home. The system urged him to regard the shrine as his new home. As he began his tasks, Yung Daeon pondered on the responsibilities that came with being the new owner of the Dragon Temple under System Alpha's guidance. Uncertain of his own greatness, he contemplated whether inheriting the shrine was merely a stroke of luck. Alpha awaited him, believing in the endless cycle of fate. Yung Daeon diligently constructed a ladder while standing on the edge of the cliff, likening his actions to playing an adventure game. To avoid any unforeseen mishaps, he was accompanied by the ostrich golem as he frequently ascended and descended to carve the cliff. Suddenly the system signaled that he had reached stage four. Young Daon found himself in a state of panic as he was quickly engulfed by a dense mist. The poisonous nature of the mist posed a grave threat to his life, but fortunately, a golem came to his rescue. Determined to assess the situation downstairs, he donned a mask and prepared to navigate through the thousands of toxic clouds. It was not a simple task to accomplish, as he did not rely solely on his refining skills to create a basic mask. What he did was far more than just a mere job. It required great courage and determination. One of the skills he possessed was purification, which allowed him to gain experience in dealing with poison. However, there came a point where certain troublesome skills needed to be eliminated and fixed. At this level, he had to put in a lot of effort to overcome the increasing number of poisonous clouds. The gas mask he wore not only served as an effective means of protection, but also had the additional purpose of directly purifying the poison cloud. He continued to cut through the rocks and repeated these actions tirelessly. While some may find this job incredibly challenging, Yung Dayon did not share the same sentiment. Eventually, he successfully cleared the sea of poison clouds that lay before him, revealing a breathtaking view. As he enjoyed watching the birds soaring in the distance, an eagle suddenly swooped down towards him. But luckily, he managed to evade the attack with the help of a swift ostrich. While young Dion was oblivious to the eagle following him down the stairs, he had constructed to the stage he resided in. The eagle proceeded to the dragon temple and wreaked havoc upon it. White Rabbit, in search of some grass, spotted a fire ahead and promptly alerted Young Dayon. Young Dayon mustered an army of golems in preparation for an attack. He commanded the golems to shoot bullets, but their stamina proved too formidable as the bullets had no effect. White Rabbit advised him to find something sharp to deal with opponents who possessed great stamina, as it would be the most effective approach. Descending, Young Dayon rummaged through his inventory in search of iron skewers. Combining them with the attacking aura of the boar, he struck the eagle's wings with the skewers, only to have them fall once again. It became evident that Young Dayon's strength was still lacking, 
while the eagle grew even more aggressive and returned to the temple without retaliating. Alpha noticed something peculiar. If the eagle belonged to her, there would be no need to attack the shrine. Perhaps the monster had its sights set on Lord Ortia. Realizing this, Young Dayon determined that the correct direction to launch an attack was the boss room. White Rabbit confirmed that the altar was the target. The altar served as the focal point for the life energy of all the relics, guarded by the monsters at the border. After determining the monster's attack direction, Young Dayon instinctively desired life energy. He swiftly utilized an ostrich to reach the location leaving the rest of the golems behind. To hinder the monster, the white rabbit cleverly used the potato field he had planted earlier to entangle its legs. Then, he constructed a wall at a considerable distance to inflict significant damage. Although this distance was sufficient, Jung Dayon employed a shard from the temple as a trap to launch an attack. A barrage of arrows emerged from the wall and struck the monster. However, Young Dayon soon realized that the number of arrows was limited and required time to reset. If he continued in this manner, his demise was inevitable. Upon hearing Young Dayon's statement about the possibility of his death in this battle, Alpha became concerned. He worried that he would not be able to safeguard the shrine until the end. During his evasive maneuver, he made a mistake and narrowly escaped being crushed by the monster. Just in time, the white rabbit led the golems into formation. However, one of the monkeys managed to grab it at the last moment. Apologizing for the delay, the white rabbit expressed regret to Jung Dayon. Following Jung Dayon's command, the golem soldiers departed, equipped with wings. Meanwhile, the monster's wings were left at Jung Dayon's feet, and the others concentrated their efforts on a single point. This time, the failure was real as he got swallowed by the monster in a flash. The poor white rabbit was in disbelief, but surprisingly, the monster released him soon after. Young Daon let out a scream and flew away as the monster attempted to devour him. He grabbed some rock salt from his inventory and tossed it into the monster's mouth, mistaking it for pepper. To his surprise, the monster reacted violently to the salt. Young Daon then recounted his encounter with the monster on the cliff's fourth stage to the white rabbit, who was unaware of the stage. He explained that if the poison cloud reset below, it was manageable. But if it was already poisoned before the reset, it posed a challenge to his strategies. Jung Daon realized the need to reset something, such as the temple's defense, but due to the decrease in life energy, it was proving to be quite difficult. Jing pondered on the next steps, considering that the baboon had the ability to channel life energy into the altar. He made the bold decision to raid the altar at his shrine, leaving the white rabbit astonished. The white rabbit was puzzled by Jung Daon's actions, questioning the purpose behind them. Jung Daon clarified that they needed to protect the concentrated life energy at the temple, likening it to a life energy battery that others would come to seize if left unguarded. Jung Daon seized the chance to infiltrate the temple and execute his scheme. To his astonishment, the very thing he sought was unveiled right in front of him, perhaps due to his status as the ultimate adversary. He beheld a shimmering purple gem atop Alpha's altar, signifying it as life energy. The altar had been altered to harness the power of enhancement magic without the need to become a mage, despite Alpha's reluctance to acknowledge it. This was the dragon's ingenious solution to restore the altar. Young Dion unlocked the gate, allowing the golems to enter undetected. After stealing from the altar, he destroyed the shrine. Unsure of his next move, Alpha reminded him to offer the gem as a sacrifice. However, this would prevent him from using the energy booster. Young Dion wondered if the shrine would come back to life, but the life energy was not concentrated enough. Regardless, it would still help in restoring the shrine. As he began repairing it, a tool panel appeared and he achieved his first accomplishment. However, the prize was missing this time. The white rabbit laughed, claiming that everything related to Jung Daeon was always broken. Another toolbar appeared, and he obtained the achievement of being an explorer of ruins, resulting in the transfer of ownership of the altar. Alpha rejoiced that the altar of death had become an altar of life now belonging to them.
They were thrilled to have finally completed the temple's renovation as they anticipated the return of the monster. Yung Dayan set a trap to await its arrival. At the cliff they reached, they realized they needed reinforcements to handle the increased number of monsters. This ability was based on the number of shrines he possessed and came with various options. However, the use of life energy also meant an increase in stats and reinforcements. Yung Dayan selected an arrow trap as his target, and as he had anticipated, the true monster emerged, falling victim to the enhanced arrow trap that Yung Dayan had set up in advance. The monster sustained injuries from the arrows, then attempted to climb up the cliff, only to be doused with hot oil by the white rabbit. Upon reaching the top, the white rabbit informed Yung Dayan that he had captured him and requested that Yung Dayan come down to meet him. Yung Dayan needed the white rabbit to confirm the monster's demise. If it did not perish, it would return, possibly in the form of its soul. Yung Dayan commended the white rabbit's diligent efforts, which proved to be much more effective than expected. While Yung Dayan was cutting through the mountain, a deep hole suddenly appeared revealing a gap emitting light from within a dark cave. It appeared that they needed to venture inside, prompting Alpha to caution Yung Dayan against underestimating the situation. Despite sensing the looming danger, Yung Dayan summoned the golem without heeding the warning. Ignoring the advice, Yung Dayan descended through the gap and discovered a circular light source, revealing a monster surrounded by glowing objects. The White Rabbit had mentioned that this monster was immortal, unable to die. This revelation left Yung Dayan perplexed, as the immortal nature of the monster posed a significant challenge. The White Rabbit seemed oblivious to the gravity of the situation unfolding before them. Upon reaching the destination, he was eager to showcase his accomplishment and claim the prize at the barbecue. However, his excitement turned to fear when he saw the terrifying scene before the White Rabbit's eyes. The white rabbit was being scolded by Yung Dayon for not being able to conduct business properly. Yung Dayon then proceeded to open the gate and position it strategically next to the trap he had set up. The gate was placed in such a way that it allowed for the flying arrows to effectively attack the monsters. After successfully defeating the monsters, Yung Dayon proudly displayed his achievements. The first achievement was to be as courageous as an eagle followed by the task of hitting a flying bird with arrows. The final challenge was to aim directly at the target. Although his archery skills were not initially impressive, Yung Dayon knew that with practice, they would become invaluable. The feast that followed consisted of griffios meat, a combination of bird and tiger. Yung Dayon believed that enhancing his firepower would be beneficial in future endeavors. Alpha mentioned that by utilizing the sunstone, the firepower would increase. The glowing rock in Eagle Cave, which contained solar energy, was the subject of discussion. It was considered a valuable treasure due to the destructive light it emitted. Over time, it became even more special. Alpha had dug a ladder down the Young Dayon Mountain, which took only two months to break the cliff. During such moments, negligence was not an option. Ensuring a safe place was a priority, while Jing Down was recovering the stone cave. White Rabbit led the golems to head out and explore the area. However, the White Rabbit returned scared, reporting that the destination was under attack by players. Yung Dayon rushed to save the golem. The player currently in the bowling alley needed to act swiftly, as the golem was at risk of being taken down. Yung Daon ran in front of the golem, causing confusion among onlookers who believed he was chasing and killing people. Despite the misunderstanding, Yung Daon was pleased to see players there. He quickly left with the golem. The golems chasing him were witnessed by all, while he could only speculate that he had led them to save everyone. This incident not only brought about misunderstandings for Yung Daon, but also unveiled the existence of the cave. Concerned about him, one person hurriedly went to see him and witnessed the golem entering the new ruins. However, this person did not enter themselves, feeling a bit embarrassed. Due to overwhelming fear, they were unable to enter and ensure everyone's safety. They returned and reported the incident to an elderly man. The elderly man expressed his concern, stating that dealing with the golems could be quite troublesome. He decided to assign this task to the new recruits, as he feared it would be dangerous for them. He insisted that it was risky to let them go, 
As intermediates or newcomers were individuals filled with passion and ambition. Yung Dayon and Poku followed the instructions to find an inhabited village, but before they could enter, they were attacked by a humanoid skeleton, only a few opponents that were easily defeated by Yung Dayon. However, as the battle progressed, more enemies emerged, attempting to overpower him with sheer numbers. The White Rabbit, witnessing Yung Dayon's determination, joined the fight and commended his strength, which seemed unwavering. The White Rabbit urged Yung Dayon to observe closely, as this battle showcased his successor's impressive combat skills. Surprisingly, the White Rabbit found the situation more manageable than anticipated. However, upon returning, he discovered the White Rabbit seeking assistance, indicating a potential threat. Whenever Yung Dayon is called upon to aid others, he swiftly responds by donning his bunny ears and rushing to their aid. Unfortunately, during one such instance, he is shot by one of the enemies, causing him to collapse in the village. Another person comes to his aid, helping him defeat the assailants. This person inquiries about the situation, and Yung Dayon recognizes him as Sung Wu. He then escorts Sung Wu back to the village to reunite with his former comrades. The display of Yung Dayon's bravery and selflessness deeply moved everyone, leading them to shed tears of gratitude. The village chief emerged from within and inquired about the situation in the dungeon. There, they found a man on the brink of defeat, his strength waning. However, this man possessed a unique ability called clairvoyance, granting him exceptional vision and insight. The village chief, Chong Suk, was currently evaluating Jung Dayon. Jung Dayon was puzzled by the intense gaze of the village head. Suddenly, the village chief broke into a smile and expressed his pleasure in meeting Jung Dayon. The reception will be held in the Headman Village Square. Some whispered about the safety of this location. The instructions were a bit unclear, as Seung Wu was expected to arrive first, followed by the others. The white rabbit made an appearance, playfully mocking Yung Dayon, who had just reunited with his companions after days of absence. Despite her tears, she seemed to be in better spirits now. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, Yung Dayon decided to focus on observing the village. He briefly wondered if the flimsy bamboo fence could really protect against monster attacks. The rundown houses appeared to be intentionally neglected. The White Rabbit warned that failure to complete the stage on time would result in punishment, ranging from being attacked by rats to a severe lack of food. As everyone gathered in the square, the village head welcomed Yung Dayon, noting his healthy appearance and assuming he had brought plenty of food with him. He desired to express something while he was in the community, where he had to share food with everyone. However, not everyone was included so he shouldn't feel remorseful without careful consideration. Yung Dayon brought illegal eagle meat for everyone, which shocked and horrified everyone present. The village leader intentionally deceived the people by claiming that he obtained it when he was on the verge of death. He was afraid that this incident would pose a threat to his leadership that night. Jung Dayon returned to the tent with Sung Wu and the others. For a moment he couldn't bear staying in this place without blankets, shoes, and a cramped and dirty tent. After completing the data entry, Yung Dayon switched to life-crafting mode. He utilized his floor-heating skill to bid farewell to the cold. Everyone in the tent was extremely thrilled. Yung Dayon stated that it was too early to be surprised at this moment. The special route had officially commenced, and he made tea for everyone to enjoy. This tea was made from leaves that were harvested just before dawn. A boy in the group was delighted, as he never expected to have the opportunity to drink tea in this place. The noise of the tea ceremony broke the silence of the tent, and Yung Dayon tried to protect the group. A fleeting moment of pleasant memories secretly empowered him. Yung Dayon didn't want people to remember the broken basement. He wanted them to remember the joyful past. Suddenly the white rabbit darted out, screaming. It was evident that something was amiss. The leaves had caused the dirt inside the rabbit's body to flow out through its tears. When everyone saw the white rabbit, they drew their weapons and prepared to fight. They shouted its name, but fortunately, Yung Dayon intervened just in time to prevent any harm. Yung Dayon recounts his journey, from creating things out of the ground to befriending rabbits, to everyone. 
Seung Wu inquiries about becoming dragon emissaries like him, while Yung Dayun wonders if Sung Wu has been living well lately. Opening the gate, Yung Dayun remembers Sung Wu's desire to be the dragon's messenger. Alpha questions if he will announce that they will serve Lord Ortia, to which Yung Dayun asks if Alpha is capable. Sung Wu persuades Alpha that good communication can reduce enemy threats, and the gate's ability can help manage their comrades. Jung Dayon is touched by Sung Wu's words, but Alpha declines due to limited capacity for dragon messengers. As they gather in the hall provided by the village head, Jung Dayon distributes food once more. Below, he showcases his professional knife skills by expertly cutting meat, even though he found the show to be a bit physically demanding. Despite this, the show was highly popular among the masses. Jung Dayon also expressed his admiration for the performance, mentioning that his knife skills had been perfected. Jung Dayon believed that one day he would encounter someone with an extra knife to challenge him. Taking advantage of the fact that people grilling meat needed salt, Jung Dayon began selling salt. Visitors were surprised by the large pile of salt, unsure of what to exchange for it. In the dungeon, money held no value. Therefore, he offered a simple transaction, exchanging enhanced items for a cup of salt. As long as he could strengthen the items, there was no issue with everyone taking home a pinch of salt. However, some individuals began to hesitate. While they desired salt, exchanging their upgraded equipment proved to be a challenge. One member of the group stepped forward, revealing an upgraded item that could be traded for salt. This individual stood out as the one who knew how to obtain upgraded equipment upon reaching the fourth floor. It became evident that these were skilled individuals, each possessing one or two unused upgrade items. Despite the allure of salt, many regretted exchanging their low-level upgraded equipment for it due to the difficulty they had faced. Yung Daon is filled with remorse. He is well aware that everyone in this community shares the same sentiment. Currently, everyone's spirits are uplifted, but as long as one person makes a purchase, the rest will undoubtedly follow suit. The news of Yung Dayon's remarkable success in selling village salt has reached the ears of people from neighboring villages. Upon hearing this news, he pondered that if he continued to sell salt in this manner, people would hold him in even higher regard than before. Consequently, he made the decision to purchase all the salt and distribute it among everyone. However, the village head was taken aback when he witnessed the sheer quantity of salt that Yung Daon had acquired. The village head was astonished to the point where he had to exchange a substantial amount of upgraded equipment in return for Yung Daon's salt. 